Yo, what's good my fellow Magic Knights? It is your boy Deadman Vince back with yet another Black Clover Mode video. Hope everybody is doing well today. Hope everybody has been able to surpass their limits. I have my Black Bull Cloak on today here because one, I love to parade around in this. And two, it's time to surpass your limits uh, for this video here. So, this video, I'm actually going to be talking about pre, uh, not pre-registration, we already did that video, go check that video out. We're actually going to be talking about re-rolling and the reality of re-rolling for this game specifically. So, the first thing that I do want to say was that I know that a lot of people who play gacha games do kind of focus very heavily on the re-rolling because they try to maximize, you know, their first roll for the game. Um... And they try to make sure that whatever characters they get at the beginning of the game, they can just kind of like steamroll throughout the game and clear out everything that they need, right? And the weird thing about Black Clover Mobile is, I feel like that might not be as big a concern as people think. I know people are looking for a YouTube video that tells them the perfect characters to play and this, that, and the third, but there's not realistically a video out like that because one, when the beta was out of, for the game, it was only a beta. So everything in the game was not supposed to be set in stone. So I'm pretty sure initially everybody was thinking things like, oh, let's re-roll for like, um, let's re-roll for, what was his name? Rill, because he has this crazy counter, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we actually saw in the little like trailers that they actually switched out Rill's counter. And realistically, I don't think Rill's counter was that powerful in the first place. I think they only switched out Rill's counter because everybody made a big deal about it and made it seem like it was crazy. I feel like if nobody really made a big deal about Rill's counter and you know we just kind of didn't say anything about it, they maybe would have like kept it in the game. But also they could have just they could have just replaced it because they wanted to save it for a later point in the game. Especially if they're going to release a Rill at the beginning of the game, <clears throat> whose whose move set is not as complex. It's not supposed to be as complex, but. You know, they've done changes to like Rail's moves, they've done changes to Charlotte's moves, and Charlotte was like a character that we got like at the end of beta anyway, so like we, I didn't really get to see like much, much of her, like from a PvP standpoint, or also from like a me using her standpoint, because I'd already worked on the characters that I wanted to work on, and I got her on like the last day. But, you know, I just feel like, I just feel like you shouldn't be focused too heavily on re-rolling your account for like that specific character, because you know, we still don't know the full scope of the things that we're going to be doing in the game because like i said we've only had access to a few events we had access to like that noel raid we had access to like another raid um we had access to the story of course but like we didn't even have access to all of like the training missions and like even without access to all the training missions i could kind of figure out characters that would be good for like farming and things like that and i'm still going to give like I'm still going to give, like, not my recommendation on characters you should get because I really feel like you should just play the game how you feel the game should be played. Um, I'm more so just going to be giving my recommendations for characters that I played with and characters that I liked. And my, the, you'll see why this is, like, you'll see why I'm saying you should be able to just kind of, like, pick for yourself because I'm going to give, like, I'm going to give, like, profound reasoning as to why I chose the characters that I'm choosing specifically. And if you don't agree with that, that's fine. I'm not telling you to adopt my point of view. I'm just letting you know that, like, maybe you should think about your play style. Maybe you should think about your experience with the beta and try to figure out which character you want there. And if not, just just wait for uh, just wait for the wiki because there is a wiki, a wonderful wiki, and I can link that down below if you guys already want to have that link on standby. But there is a wiki um, that you can reference whenever the game does come out. And it may not be up to date right now, obviously, because the game's not out yet. We don't have 100% information until that game comes out on day one but i can guarantee you when that game comes out on day one they will be working to fix that wiki up and make sure that it matches um but basically uh not only not only are there a lot of different characters that the game started out with so i'm pretty sure the game started out or not started out but like when we had beta and we collected all the characters i'm pretty sure all the characters let's actually go to my yami video for reference because i said how many characters there were all right guys we're here on my channel just wanted to say i'm at 199 subscribers um if somebody could give me that last subscribe and get me to 200 before the game comes out i'll do something a little special special for the channel um but we're gonna actually look down here for this yami showcase and we're gonna look for the part specifically where i show off uh i guess we don't even really have to listen to it you can see right here it says my mage collection is Yep, so there was 34 mages in the beta when the beta initially had dropped, and you can see right here that I do have every character, and even if we go out of this screen, you will see that it says mages, oh wait, that was that was the wrong way. 
you see that it, yep right here you see that it says mages 100 so there were originally 34 characters in the game and i worked on a lot of different characters but i wasn't even able to max out every single character because we only had a week and i wasn't able to dump the resources that i that i wanted to dump into it not to say that i needed to dump extra resources into it and extra resources we all know that i mean money but i'm not saying that i needed to dump extra resources into it i'm just saying that that's i already know what i'm gonna do when the game comes out man and i'm just i you play how you practice right but basically there were already 34 characters initially in the beta for the game when they were just letting us test it out now think about the fact that they've added so many new characters that there are 51 characters that is literally 17 extra characters Ooh, that math was a little quick for me this early in the morning but that's literally 17 extra characters that we have to choose from and make new like different compositions with and the fact that they've also changed and reworked some of the older characters that were already in the game files that we were already able to play with it's just like it's kind of like a mixed bag to say oh get this character get this character get this character because we make these videos and we say get this character get this character get this character and then all of a sudden if the characters change the character doesn't really do exactly what we thought the character did so what i say is maybe try to like get a translator app or wait for the wiki like i said just try to figure out exactly what the characters do and just really just take take your gacha experience into your own hands i remember when i played dokkan and i still play dokkan but i remember it for like the longest i remember i just throw teams together and i would just be like oh they fit in the same category but i would never like look at the passive skills i just be like oh they should link together they should link together and then i get into battle and i'm just like oh why don't they link together right and then finally you know you realize you have to start taking it a little more not serious but like you just gotta kind of be a little more thorough in your information search, right? So now when I look at a Dokkan unit, I don't just think, oh, he's Super Saiyan 2 and he's also Super Saiyan 2. Let's put him on the same team. No, 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 no. Now I'm looking at the unit like, eh, these link skills are okay. The pass is pretty good. I can probably put him in this spot in the rotation. See, there's a lot more thinking to it when you really like get down to the nitty gritty of it, right? And that's how it should be. It shouldn't be, oh, I looked up this character. This character's good. I know that that's the easy way out. But I feel like if you want the game to go how you want it to go, you should really just try to like find your research on your own characters and try to figure out what characters you want to play with. And um, let me go ahead and get around to my like what I'm going to shoot for, right? So what I'm going to try to shoot for is getting Yami and Vengeance in my first like su in my first summon because I believe the reroll is like limited to like 20 rerolls and don't don't quote me on that but I believe somewhere it did say there were like 20 rerolls so the rerolls are not unlimited that's another reason why I'm making this video because I don't want people to go in with the expectation of I can re-roll and get whatever I want and get the perfect start. Like, that's just not how it works. There's a, there's a decent chance because we're going to be at the beginning of the game when the pool is at its lowest, like, amount of, like, different units. And it'll be easiest for you to pull a specific character you're looking for. But just because it's easier for you to pull the character that you're looking for, it's not guaranteed. That's, that's the game of RNG, right? So... Don't go in like, oh, I need this, I need this, I need this. You don't need anything. Just get what you want. Because I remember when they released that raid in the beta, the teams I had just weren't working out. And I was bringing like all SSR units and everything. And like, that that's the that's the illusion, right? You're like, oh, they're SSRs, they're better for this, blah, blah, blah. You don't think about it. You just throw them on the team and then they get, wa they get washed because they're not the right role or they're not the right color. You know what I'm saying? But when that raid actually came out not the noel raid but the one versus i think his name is like Beto gigas or something like that i just can't i feel like that is the name but i can't remember if that was in another game i was playing because that sounds like it would be like a grand cross character or villain but basically this guy right here georg you see he is a rare unit this unit i actually did get to lr level 100 and i did use him because his kit is very basic yes but while it is very basic it does actually have a lot of speed reduction to it so i was actually able to reduce the speed of that boss like over and over again and just kind of like keep it hard locking him to be like the last person in the turn but we would eventually just keep skipping his turn because i kept hard locking him on the speed right i also tried Catherine out because Catherine has some speed reduction like uh capabilities and she's also just another cheap character to work on but like that's what i'm talking about it's not like you need like Oh, say a character up here has like speed reduction. William, I know for certain has speed reduction because he turns you into a tree and he reduces your stamina to like zero, which does affect your speed, right? But you don't need William to to tamper with the enemy team's speed. You literally have these two over here who are rares and like, yes, they may not be the best. They may not have the best stats, but if you properly gear them, they can get what you need done in an event, right? So let's not worry too much about what other people are telling us to get. 
but more so, I feel like you should just kind of get the character that you want, you know? And like I said, if you played in the beta, then yes. There are certain characters that you're going to want to go for. Go for those characters, then. That's cool. That's perfectly fine. It's, that's your play experience, right? If you've not played the beta, then, you know, I'm going to just give you a little bit of insight here. Like I said, if you can work on these rare characters here to get, uh, you know, some extra effects done. Let's, let's be real here. I have not seen one, two, three, these three characters here, but... I imagine Sister Lily is going to have some form of healing because she has water magic and Noelle already is like a defensive mage that you're going to get for free because she's an SR unit. Like SSR units, I can see them not giving away for free, right? They're, I don't think any of these characters right here were given to us for free. Also, another thing to consider is that Leopold used to be SR. Now he's an SSR. So before, I wouldn't say Leopold is like somebody you will want to reroll for because he was an SR character. You have a much easier chance of getting that character. But now that he's not an SR character, he has as he is an SSR character. Obviously, one thing that comes with a, a rarity jump is like your stats are buffed. But they possibly could change his effects around. And SSRs, it seems, get extra effects over SRs and rares too. So let's just be let's just be aware of all of the new pieces to this equation that we're getting. Uh, he Grice is a pretty cool unit because he can do that for full team freeze. Um, Mars is a really good unit because he has like stun like there are a lot of good options Mimosa is always going to be a great unit either one of these two Mimosas because the, oh man Mimosa is such a ridiculous healer the healing that Mimosa does in the story that pisses people off who aren't true Black Clover fans they're just like oh bullshit this Diddy Clover see Mimosa does those kind of heals in the game and that shit is toxic so you know Mimosa is like a really like solid character to get I feel like Vanessa is probably going to have some really really good support to her um, just because of the fight that Veto had against Asta, Finraw, and Vanessa. I said the wrong name first, but I just kind of rolled off of it. That was smooth, wasn't it? Um, Marx is probably going to have some form of like speed boost or reduction because he's like teleportation magic, right? Or does he have like that memory? No. Yeah. Does he have like memory magic? No, he doesn't have teleportation magic. What am I talking about? He can like project holograms or like live feeds of himself and things like that. Um, Gordon's definitely going to have some form of like healing later on in the game. I don't know about the initial start of the game, but Gordon, as we do know, learns how to pretty much become a recovery mage with poison by reversing the effects of poison. So Gordon's going to be a very crucial character later on in the game. And I feel like he's going to be one of those dark horse characters where like nobody ever really cares about him too, too much whenever he drops. But I feel like if you work on him, you can get him to really do some really nice, unique, like niche things. And like, it's just like all these little considerations, all these little considerations, man. Like, it's just like, there's so many different like characters here, bro. It's like, you don't need every single one of these characters. It would be very nice to have. And I'm, of course, I'm going to strive to get every one of these characters. But like, man, all these characters are so like unique but still can cover like the same bases that is just like feel you're a little freer for your like play style i feel like games usually start out with a lot less characters at the start and since you have so many characters there's just such a nice variety of characters which honestly that's another thing i did not expect this many characters for black clover mobile i did not expect for them to bring everybody and their cousin and their mom and their grandma right but they did bring along every character from the franchise basically and they they're going to continue to do that and i think that's really cool um asta has some asta has some solid like tanking capabilities like he can kind of like cover your team you know this sr you know these two you're gonna get for free you know is a really good farmer he has a couple aoe moves um his skills do hit pretty hard once you get his skill pages and set them up correctly um I, I like the fire units because they have burn luck's a little weird i don't know uh when i was playing with luck and luck's one of my favorite characters luck was a little weird to play with but i feel like if i can get the proper gear form that's another thing gear right we weren't able to farm up every single material that we needed to work on our gear fully and work on all of our substats fully and things like that so we didn't get to maximize rolling out gear the reason why i'm choosing yami and vengeance is because that combo is very deadly. First of all, Yami and Vonjins did not have a combo skill, like a special combo move in the beta, but Vonjins' combo with other people is that he gives them a buff right before. So I would pretty much buff Yami and then use Yami's like skill that hits everybody, and it would do a little bit more damage just because of Yami's, or just because of Vonjins' buff. But in addition to that, when I'm facing team compositions that do have real or focus real or something like that, then, you know, Von just turns real into a tree. Will, or Rill's pop, damn. Von just turns real into a tree. 
Ryu cannot pop off with his counter. Yami just slashes this man's health away. And by the time he turns it back from a tree, back into a magic knight captain, and he can pop his counter again, you can just kill him with Yami, actually. And I've done it, like, plenty of times. The only person that I really couldn't, like, get around in PvP is, like, Mimosa. Like, you quite literally just have to, like, and I'm not going to say can't get around, but, like, you literally just have to, like, have dirty-ass damage potential for Mimosa. Because Mimosa is a healing menace, a beast, a monster. She's a really good unit. <clears throat> um, but yeah, man, that's, I guess that's really all I have to say about, no, it isn't. Yami, by the way, guys, a lot of people were discounting Yami hard during the beta, saying like, oh, Yami this, Yami that. Well, listen, listen, listen. I feel like they were looking for units that had like 30 billion different bells and whistles, but this is the beginning of the gacha game. The, the units that have a million bells and whistles typically are spread too thin. They have a million bells and whistles, but it's the beginning of the game, so they didn't want to go too crazy, so they can't really make the unit, like, absolutely nutty like they want to. Characters who have more basic kits, like Yami, who are just, like, focused on, like, high damage, I feel like those are units that not necessarily you want to focus, but I feel like those are the units that you're meant to focus early on in the games like this. Like, the complicated characters, yes, will come in handy later on down the road, especially when they get extra buffs, extra materials, extra gear, and things like that. Um, but just for the very beginning of the game, I feel like you're going to be, I feel like you might be chasing a dead end at the very start. Just like chasing a unit who can do, who can do like, oh, they do this certain amount of damage and then this damage. And this is just an example. This damage, uh, gives them health back for how much, a percentage of the damage they do, or it gives them a percentage back and then spreads that health out amongst other people in your team. Cool. It's nice that you have all that stuff, but when you can have something like that, I feel like they will lower your attack stat or something like that just to make sure you can't just cheese like you you one tap one and you one shot one enemy and then like your entire team just gains like half their health back just off of that one in interaction right i don't feel like they're gonna do anything like that because that's just a little like treacherous to deal with um more so i feel like the units that are like very basic in like theme and, and, and scheme and makeup build um i feel like those units are going to be the ones they capitalize on and those are the ones you're going to want to focus on at the beginning of the game so let me finish giving my recommendations out for characters. Obviously, I'm not going to recommend any rare units because rare units are going to be like rocks in the ocean. People are just going to be dropping rocks in the ocean. You're just going to pick the rocks up, right? I don't know how that analogy was working, but yeah, literally these characters are going to be whatever. Um, Obviously, work on the free characters that they give you because the free characters actually can take you far. And, and honestly, the free characters that they give you, Noel you know asta they're a pretty versatile set of characters so you know these guys can majority handle the story for you and one thing that i do love about games like this and even though grand cross i believe is a dead game one thing that i do pride on the fact in grand cross is every character it feels useful because in Dokkan, you summon characters, and some of the characters are like rares or SRs. And just because they're rares or SRs, they cannot shoot all the way up to like LR. But do you know how much funner Dokkan would be if like every single unit you got, you could boost them up to an LR and get that crazy ass potential? And like that's how it feels with Grand Cross. Because say you get a rare character, I can still get the extra cosmetics for that character and get five cosmetics on for extra stats. They still have a UR cosmetic for the most part, hopefully. Um, you can still get them up to UR, you can still UR gear for them, they still have a holy relic, like, every character is kept in mind, kinda, with Grand Cross, whenever, uh, new things come out, and that's what I kinda hope they do with Black Clover Mobile, the reason why I say kinda is because I kinda hope they do similar to Grand Cross, but not exactly how Grand Cross functions, because Grand Cross, I feel like, I feel like Grand Cross has a really good idea, and the idea starts out as like a cube. You'll understand what I mean in a second. The idea starts out as a cube and then they start to cut corners for money. Then the cube turns into a sphere. And then it's like you lost the original plot, right? I hope you guys follow that. Cut too many edges, you get a completely different result that's maybe not as good. Because say the cube was gonna be used as like a centerpiece and you put it in the middle of your table and it's just there and it looks nice. If you have a sphere, that's just gonna roll off your table. So don't lose the plot. <coughs> <coughs> don't lose the plot. Um, but yeah, characters I would reroll for. There's another picture actually saying which character is supposed to be out on release. I don't know how accurate that picture is, but we're gonna jump to that picture just to be safe because they are definitely not about to have the Eye of the Midnight Sun just out as soon as the game's out. That's ridiculous. Maybe they wait and build up to that little campaign just to have a little hype summon banner. But yeah, let's go find that picture. 
of the um of the other uh the other character roster picture of characters that are supposedly supposed to be out as soon as the game drops. Oh, yeah, all these characters have been confirmed from the website. And it says there's a possibility that more will be added in at the start. Um so if I were looking at this, I'd probably go for and these are just my recommendations for characters. Obviously, Austin, you know, and Noel, they're going to come to you for free skis, so don't even worry about that. Yami, I personally do like because I do genuinely believe that if you can get Yami's gear built out correctly. The problem with Yami is that he has a lot of crit damage. Does not have a lot of crit rate, though. So if you can build and maximize, supplement this man's crit rate to make that shit balance out kind of with his stats or just make it much better than it is. Yami is going to start hitting like, and I mean, when Yami crits, hold on. So let's, let's take a look at Yami, right? Yami's crit damage is 108.5%. As you can see, he's not the most defensive character, but his crit damage is impressive, more than 100%. The only issue is that his crit percent chance is only 26.6%. So if you can prop, and here's Georg, by the way, that I was talking about that I used for the raid. But if you can get Yami, crit, if you can get Yami's crit rate up, then Yami is a completely different dude, right? So the issue was that okay 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 not even the issue let's let's look a little more over his kit you'll see right here that like Yami is very heavy big on damage and this is what I was talking about I have all these skills right here level five obviously when you get their skill page it boosts one of the skills this skill right here is an AOE actually so let's look at the effects of the AOE and let's look at the boosted effect on it this this just has like defense reduction on it now continue the slash nope that's still the first move but well, let's let's go over it. This move has a 50% chance to apply defense reduction to level one, uh, or defense reduction level one to an enemy target for two turns. Um, defense reduction one is reduces defense by 40%. I feel like they will implement like an easy A system later in the game. This is completely unrelated. I feel like they'll implement an easy A system later in the game where this turns from like a defense reduction level one to like a level two, level three maybe. Um, you can see your base attack stat, and then you can see you add extra attack on with these uh, skill upgrades, right? When we take a look at skill two, okay. Damn, I was talking. I was talking to no end about. There we go. Dark cloak wind slash. Now this slash hits everybody. This is an AOE. No, it isn't. What? Is his base skill the AOE? Cause that. Oh yeah, his base skill is the AOE. That's right. That's why Yami's so good because his basic skill does hit everybody. And if you can get it to crit, then it does so much for you. <sighs> This one, this the second move. I'm sorry, is the move where he winds up and attacks a single enemy. But let's look at the effect on it. Performs a combined attack. Oh wait, damn, I skipped over it, dude. Right there. Okay, we need to pop up. And I almost had Dark Rage like popped out too. That's the only reason why I did the uh, or maxed out. That's the only reason why I did the. Uh, okay, cool. Dark uh, Dark Rage. Slashes a blade enhanced with dark magic at the enemy and dealing damage. So that's a, that's my skill too. I'm just trying to find that extra skill on it though. I know I showed it in the video. Dark Rage. Um, so this passive is not the passive that's actually on the skill itself, but this passive is separate from the skill. Applies 18% defense pierce to self for uh, two turns. So he gives himself a high 18% higher chance to pierce defense upon landing a successful crit with a skill. See. This is Yami's issue. Things in his kit start to require him to get crits, but he has such a low crit chance that it just doesn't happen. When it does happen, because you gotta think, when Yami finally does crit, not only are you stacking an extra defense pierce with his passive skill, but you're also you're also just doing a critical attack. That's naturally just gonna do more damage. And Yami's critical damage is more than more than double, that's how that works, right? If it's more than 100%, more than double the damage you would originally do, which I have seen it. And that is how it works because Yami doesn't crit, hits for like 10,000. Yami does crit, hits for like 38,000. I'm thinking of a specific scene, or maybe maybe it's like 14,000, 38,000. I could be fudging the numbers on that because it's been so long since I've looked back at this. A unique passive. Applies 10% final damage increase to self for one turn upon successfully landing the crit. But yeah, you, you guys get the point. Combined attack. Applies weapon enhancement level one and then attacks the enemy target if they have defense reduction buff. All friendly targets gain one special point upon defeating the enemy. That one's not really based on crit, but even still, just a very good, like, kind of, like, extra skill. That's dark mid. Yeah, okay, I guess I just didn't check out skill two. But it enhances skill two. Um, I'm trying to remember what exactly... Oh, wait, I have it written on the docs somewhere. I can uh, actually pull it up on the side over here. 
And like, I'm sorry that this video is just not like fully organized, but you know, I just woke up in the morning and it was lay in bed before work and complain about, think about complaining about work or is get out of bed and you know, make a video, however I gotta get it done, right? And <clears throat> honestly, I'm just glad that I can be here making these videos for you guys. I'm very excited for the game to be out and I don't wanna, I don't want to, you know, mess myself up and not start making these videos because I know these videos are important to some people, you know, like when it feels like some people aren't watching, when it feels like a hundred people aren't watching, you know, there is one person who is watching and honestly, it, it, that, that makes that big of a difference. Skill two as a 40% crit rate buff for self. So his skill two gives him extra 40% crit rate if you have this skill page. So, you know, just things like that. That's the one thing that tries to bu bu buff his um, crit rate, but just that alone is not, not good enough, especially when like, if your crit rate's not even 100%. Oh, and then I looked at his ultimate. Um, all, applies 10% skill damage increase for two turns upon landing successful crit with skill. All friends gain 15% stamina increase upon defeating an enemy target. So, this is all this is all based off crit as well. If you can crit, you can apply this extra effect right here, doing more damage, which possibly leads you to defeating a target, which gives you that 50% stamina increase on all your like allies, right? So you can see very much that Yami is a character who does need to get his crits off, but if he's not getting his crits off, he can look like a very bad character. Uh, talents, we're not even gonna talk about talents right now, dude. I can't stand talents. And honestly, I guess I could kind of go over, I guess I could kind of go over these videos and talk about like how to play the game a little before the game actually comes out. <clears throat> But yeah, talents is a shit system. They need to fix that already. Here comes the gear right here. This is kind of what I was talking about. You can actually max out your gear. LR gear can be plus 12. SSR and UR gear can be plus eight. Uh, SR and rare gear can be plus four, basically. And, and that's just like the stat increase that you get on it. It'd be kind of like enhancing your gear on Grand Cross, but instead you're just, there are no stars to it, at least not yet. And you gotta fit your you gotta fit your pieces into a grid right here. I kind of like to call this system like the uh, Dragon Ball Raging Blast one system because they used to give you that big square and you had to fit the pieces inside of the square, but make them all fit. And that was kind of like your item setup for your character to make them stronger. But it also is kind of like Genshin, the way that you have to like get the weapons and the way that you work on the weapons, right? And the extra effects for the weapons because it's not it's so so cut dry and simple as oh give me these extra substats. And you, guys, look here, you can see. Geez, my crit damage was increased by 83.5%. But you can also see right here that my my uh, my crit chance was increased by 16.6%. Still putting it to this, I believe. So I believe the number that we're seeing right here already adds to this right here, right? So they're just showing us the extra percentage that we're getting on it. And even less of a defensive character than I thought. Because originally his crit resistance is 0.5%, not 5.5. But basically... Um, this is, this is just how the gear kind of like looks here and you can see my Yami is like fully geared out and I, I tried to orient him towards like more damage. Hopefully I click on some gear here and we get to see like a couple, a couple of the pieces. Oh, you had to like go into like the information for the gear. So I probably didn't do that. Oh no, no, no. Well, I didn't do that. Yeah, actually. Let's take a look. Cause when you switch it, it shows the, the gear changes. Yes. So you see, I took off a piece and it lowers all my stats right here you can see that this has two different effects pretty much the way that the gear works and this isn't a gear video but the way the gear works is you have two pieces on it has one effect you have four pieces on it has another effect you want to fit four pieces whichever effect you're more like more dedicated to and then two more pieces of another effect that you think would also also be kind of like beneficial in the background to your, to your character right oh, oh oh that's what i was looking for right there so you see we have substats on that let's pop it back up we just had substats to look at so you see the substats right here are attack hp defense um and they are boosted from the levels um we didn't really have an item that allowed us to like re-roll things like this and also you see right here damage resistance is another substat right and i'm pretty sure these substats right here can change but we don't really get any items in the beta for the game that allowed us to re-roll these substats or anything like that. So I never really got to maximize my Yami and get that crit chance all the way out. So, you know, you already know that I'm about to follow in my own footsteps because that's the only footsteps that I could follow in. Uh, I'm about to follow in my own footsteps and try to go ahead and get this man, like, back up to a certain number beyond the numbers that he was already hitting. And then PvP, I don't think he crits too much because, you know, other characters have crit resistance. It's a little easier to see his crits in, like, uh, events where there's not an enemy with crit resistance. But let's see. So, 
right there. That's what I'm talking about right here. You can see that on the enemy, hold on, there we go. You can see right here that on this enemy, Yami hits for, and that's where I got 38,000 from, I'm sorry. But even still, Yami hits this enemy, and this is his basic attack, mind you. Yami hits this enemy for 5,700. He has this unit right here for 17,000, and this unit here for 16,000. So when Yami crits, he does like nearly three times the damage that he's supposed to be doing, right? Or not supposed to be doing, but three times the damage that he usually would do without extra crits and damage pierce and all that. But due to him critting, he procs his extra damage pierce, his extra, you know, the skill damage increases on his ultimate, but you know, all the extra little effects that he gets whenever he gets a crit. So imagine a yami where you can build him up in a way where <clears throat> look at this you can see his buff right here increase final damage right here from him getting a crit over here so when yami crits not only does he do good damage but he keeps propping extra effects for himself to give himself even better damage right and if we can build ourselves the units in a way that the parts of their kits that are supposed to be constant can be constant then units look completely different and we don't have a 100 percent solid depiction of characters right now that's the whole point that I'm trying to make. And I know that I always go back to this damn Yami video, but I feel like I got some pretty good, like, I feel like I got some pretty good footage here. A lot of reference material here. I'm sorry. I just kind of wanted to see this man Jack hit an attack because I'm pretty sure I'm talking right now. But yeah, Jack hits pretty hard as well. But you see, even when Jack, <clears throat> even when Jack crits a unit, the unit that he crit Yami literally did, hold on, now granted this Jack doesn't have as good gear as Yami, but I try to keep him like somewhat similar, oh shit, I try to keep him somewhat similar, so we'll see right here that this man Jack crit, and when Jack crits, he does less damage than Yami does not critting, but the extra thing with Jack is, that extra number right here, Jack has bleed damage as well, I think that's bleed damage, um, Jack also has bleed damage, so you know, it's just like little things like that to consider. Everybody has their own little ins and outs to their kit. So don't necessarily discount any one character. Just just keep a, cause like this card right here, this is the base, you know, I know I have them in the premium costume, but this is the base, you know. This card right here hits one person. Um, it has a chance to hit multiple people, I think. If you, if you crit somebody or you knock somebody out with this skill, I think it hits everybody else on the team right after, like a double hit. So it's like, oh, he's dead. Like some shit like that, right? And then this move, Towering Tornado, actually does hit everybody. This move hits everybody. This move hits everybody. This is why I say you know's a really good farmer. And you know is an SR character that you're gonna get for free. So don't don't stress out too 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 much about the characters that you're getting. Now to actually go back to the website or to Twitter, the website. To go back to Twitter and actually give my recommendations for real, for real this time. Um these three you're gonna get for free. I recommend Yami because Yami can do some dirty ass damage once you get him up. Um, Nozella is a debuffer. He seems pretty chill. Uh, Fuego. Fuego has a really good burn damage potential. You can if you can maximize his burn damage, you can you can have the enemy team in for a bad time. Lotus is really great for PvP. He can confuse enemies or stun them or whatever the effect is they're calling it. Um, who else? Oh, dude, Mars isn't in here. Okay. Oh, no, 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 Mars is right here. I'm lying. Mars is right here. Mars is another really good unit for PvP. He has that, like, I don't remember if it's a full team stun or if it's just, like, a one unit stun. But either way, stun is scary in PvP in, uh, game, in gacha games, especially when you're at the beginning of the game because, you know, stun stun doesn't matter too much when your units are beefy enough to take the hits while they're stunned but stun really does matter when you're at the beginning of the play like at the beginning of the life cycle of the game and like your units aren't built up crazy like that uh, another unit that i would recommend is jack because jack is a pretty solid farmer as well his bleed damage does do some pretty good uh effects to enemies uh william is a clear like yes because william literally turns people into a tree, reduces their speed, reduces their stamina to zero, they become pretty much useless. Useless, like, you, William Vaughn just gives a new definition. It's not even bricked anymore, it's just tree. You're just twigged, bro, you're, you're twigged. Um, I imagine these two are gonna be really good support, so I don't think either one of them are SSR, though, so, you know, just, uh, if you get them in your first, like, reroll pulls, that's pretty cool. Uh, Charmy's a really good healing unit, so don't sleep on Charmy, and her ultimate has some damage to it. 
Uh, Mimosa is a very, very good healing unit, but she is an SR. Um, if you get the SSR Mimosa, though, off to the races with your brother. Mimosa is the other character that can pretty much negate that man, Rill, because Rill's, like, counter just couldn't out-damage Mimosa's healing ridiculousness. Uh, Heath Grice isn't a SSR character, is not an SSR character, so it don't really focus him. But yeah, that, that's going to be my final, like, kind of, like, deduction. Yami, Fuego... Yami Fuego, Vengeance, Jack, and these two, Lotus and Mars. That'd probably be who I'd say, like, go for. And obviously, when the game comes out, we will see how they actually function. And if my recommendation is asked, you can't blame me because this entire video is about you having freedom of choice. And if you freely chose to listen to me, then that is your fault. But that's going to be it for your boy, Dead Man Vince. Hope you guys love my ramblings. Oh my god, my 37 minute ramblings about fucking nothing really. About about rerolling and how how not important it is because eventually you end up getting all the characters anyway. But yeah, if you guys did enjoy the video, then you can dark cloak yeah, that like button and that subscribe button um, and get ready for the game to come out. The game is coming out in five days now and it's coming out in four days in America because five days in Japan doesn't work the same here because Japan is 13 hours, not into the future, but just the way that their time zone is set up 13 hours ahead of us in time. So the game will be here on the 24th, not the 25th. Um, if it does come on the 25th, then so be it. We're still ready to play. But um, actually, let's 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 point that out real quick so it says the game will officially be opening at 5 p.m est on wednesday the 24th pre-download happens at 11 a.m est on monday so the 24th or the 25th 6 a.m is when the game is supposed to drop and i was wondering about that because i thought the game was supposed to drop at midnight on um i thought the game was supposed to drop at midnight on on the 25th in japan which would translate back to 11 a.m. on the 24th in America, but, or in, on my time zone in America, but, dude, time zones are so hard, but, um, the game's actually coming out at 6 a.m. in Japan, so that means that 13 hours before that, the game will be coming out 5 p.m. Uh, on that Wednesday in America, so that is the times that we have right now, get those times slated in your mind, 6 p or 5 p.m., May 24th, Wednesday, EST, that is the time we're talking about. 6 a.m. May 25th, JST. Just to start giving you kind of like time zones. Uh, I don't I don't know what this is for because the game's not coming out on a Saturday or Friday. I mean, it's this is Korean standard time, so this is not JP. This is, I'm pretty sure this one's JP. Um, but yeah, that's all I have for this video. I already did my Dark Cloak Hia bit. You, if you guys enjoyed the video, like, subscribe. Um, definitely give me the 200 before the game comes out, and we'll do something a little special. Uh, I'm not going to say what it is yet, but it'll be pretty cool. Um, but, yeah, that's going to be it for your boy, Deadman Vince. Hope you guys enjoyed the information. Peace.